Hi everyone, this is Noreen Aguirre. Thanks for tuning in. Um, today I would like to discuss with you the, the topic of a pagan holiday and um, about celebrating Christmas. If you know, I know there's a lot of talk out there and um, people are questioning is it okay or even feeling guilty about celebrating Christmas. So I want to go over with you a couple um topics, a couple Bible verses, and um, pretty much share with you as much as possible in the little time as possible. <laughs> um, so pretty much pagan. Pagan was, you know, what does pagan mean? It's pag pagan has a lot of names to it, and it's pretty much, to to put it as small as I can, it's um, it's a no religion holiday. It does, I mean, it's not holiday, but it's just no religion. It has no religion in it at all. It's something that, um, I should say would represent, um, worldly delights, um, and pleasures and, um, material possessions. Okay. So that's, that's what pagan pretty much means. So a lot of people say that, um, Christmas is a pagan holiday. And the reason why they, you know, they, they would say that pagan, you know, Chris, Christmas is a pagan holiday is because it started long time ago in the Roman Empire. Um, they would have their pagan festivals, um, around the 17th to the 24th of December. They would celebrate, um, their festivals. The Christians didn't want to have any part with of what they were doing. So they decided at that time, um, to do their own thing and to do what was most important to them was, you know, the carnation of, 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 you know, God, which was Jesus Christ. So they started celebrating, um, the birth of Jesus Christ around that time. Um, but they picked up uh, some of the customs that the pagans used to do. Um, the Christians continued doing it as well. Um, they would worship a tree. I shouldn't say the Christians worship a tree, but, you know, we have trees in our home. So they would worship a tree and the sign of that would bring, they would bring gifts, you know, to the tree and they would decorate it with gold and, and, um, you know, decorations and stuff like that. So they would worship this tree. Um, so the Christians, that's why a lot of people say that it's a pagan holiday because, um, the roots come from paganism and, um, but pretty much what the Christians did, they turned it around into something, you know, good. They, they, they turned it around to something that they can honor God through it. And, um, and what they would celebrate the tree is, um, they look at it as a symbol of the cross. Um, and the presence, they look at it as, as, um, you know, we're giving, you know, the gifts that, you know, that Lord, you know, Lord, the Lord gave us a gift, which was, this, you know, Jesus Christ. And that's how we see it, the gifts or, or a time of giving to, to others. Um, it's very important that we understand. Um, I feel in my heart that there's really nothing wrong with celebrating Christmas. It's not a commandment. The Bible doesn't command us to celebrate Christmas and it doesn't, you know, tell, it doesn't command us and say we need to celebrate the birth of Jesus or that Jesus's birthday is actually in December or on the 25th. Actually, in the New Testament, um, it was actually, you know, the time of his birth wasn't actually that time of year. Um, so, you know, pretty much, you know, people do it to, to honor God at that time. And, um, I feel that if there's nothing, if your if your heart's right, you know there's nothing wrong with it. We celebrate a lot of people um, that we know, loved ones. We celebrate their birth. I feel that you know God is not going to condemn us for celebrating His birth and honoring Him. I feel that this is something that we should do every single day of our lives and um, celebrate the birth of Jesus and celebrate what God has done in our lives. Um, so if we take the time of year to come together as as one and to celebrate with the church, um, you know, the birth of Jesus and we're honoring him and God is in the center of everything all and it's all to glorify him. I don't see anything wrong with it. And um, I, I feel that we have to be careful that we're not 
condemning other people or what they're doing or being a stumbling block to what what they're doing. And, um, you know, what would make it a pagan, paganism holiday or Christmas um, if we just took God out of it and we just celebrated and we got drunk and we partied and, you know, we did gifts and stuff like that. I mean, that's that's a paganism holiday because God is not in it at all. But us as Christians, if we kept God in it, then I believe that there's nothing wrong with that. And the Bible tells us in um, Romans 14, 7, it reads, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of what we eat or drink, but of living a life of goodness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. If you serve God with this attitude, you will please God and others will prove of you too. So then let us aim for harmony in the church and try to build each other up. Don't tear apart the work of God over what you eat. So that's kind of what I'm telling you. It's not, you know, don't don't bring down God's kingdom for somebody putting up a Christmas tree. You know, there's so many other things that we need to worry about in this in this world than somebody decorating for Christmas. As long as their heart is right, as long as they they're not worshiping the tree, you know, you know. So if they're not worshiping the tree and their worship is in God and um, they put it up as as a sign of celebration and um, giving thanks to God or whatever, as long as they're not worshiping, you know, idols, which would be a tree or whatever. So if there's something wrong with it, our job is to bring other people, you know, to bring people to God, to to the salvation um, and to let God be the one to judge and let God be the one that touches their heart and tells them what they need to do. We're going to turn to Galatians 2.16, which says, Don't let anyone condemn you for what you eat or drink or nor, or for not celebrating certain holidays or the moon or certain or on the Sabbath. Okay, so it's, it's kind of telling us, you know, we can't condemn other people for things that they do. This is God's job. So our job is to bring other people to Christ and let him transform their lives. Let him do the work that needs to be done. If there's something wrong, he's going to place it in their heart. Once they have a relationship with him, he's going to place it in their heart and exactly what they need to do, what they need to take out of their lives, what they need to add. So that's something that we don't need to worry about. We don't need to fight over it. You know, just continue guiding people to Christ and let God do the work. Because if we were to start fighting pretty much everything that we do all over the world is is a pagan. I mean, it even started with the the dates of of the week. You know, Monday meant something, Tuesday meant something, Wednesday meant something. I don't remember all the dates, but I remember Friday was the day of love. Um, when we look at Friday, we don't think of oh, today is the day of love. No, we think of it as Friday. You know, the last day of the you know the week, or tomorrow we're off, or or payday, whatever it is. Um, a good way to illustrate it is also. Um, you know, pretty much, you know, you know, Jesus created, you know, sexual intercourse to be a bond between a husband and wife within marriage, um, a bond between marriage. So, um, you know, that's something that's beautiful. Now, if you take it out of that, it's something bad, you know. So in God, it's beautiful and out of it, it's not. OK, so, you know, there's a lot of things that you, you know, you can. If we're going to sit here and argue on what we can't do, the bottom line is, is where is your heart? Okay, that's that's the bottom line. Where is your heart? If if your heart is pure, your actions are pure, your thoughts are pure, then there's nothing wrong with that. God sees that. Now, if if your actions and your heart is wrong, then then that's that's the problem. Okay, so, um, you know, that's something that I just want to share with you. And, um, you know, let's not waste our time fighting. Uh, especially with other believers. Um, our job is to uplift, not be stubbly blocks in any one's life, but to constantly keep uplifting our brothers and sisters for the glory of God, for God's kingdom. It's not our, our job to condemn people. Um, it's our job to bring people closer to him, helping them have a relationship with him. So I pray that this message was a blessing to you. Um, until um, next Thursday, um, I, next Tuesday, I normally do my videos on Tuesday, but God is placing my heart. Um, so I will probably be doing them twice a week. Um, I'm focusing on Tuesday and Thursday. So I will probably do another one on Thursday and Thursday would probably be what's he's tugging at my heart is to be, um, the topic of unequally yoked. Um, and we're going to read John eight thirty two, 
which says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. With that, I would like to leave you. Um, if you haven't received um, Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I would like to give you the opportunity to do so at this time. Just bow your heads and just pray along with me. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for this life you've given me, Father God. I ask that you forgive me, Father God, for anything bad I said or done or even thought of, Father God. I ask that you come into my heart, Father God, and make it your home, Father God. I ask that everything I do be pleasing and honoring to you, Father God. Guide me in the way and the directions I should go, Father God. Give me the wisdom, Father God, and, and, and everything I need to do, Father God. That everything we do be pleasing to you. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. 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 So thank you guys for tuning in. And um, if that was your first time saying saying that prayer, continue seeking God. Continue um, hearing his word, uh, praising him, because there's a lot more that he's going to do in your life. He, you know, it's just the beginning. So until next time, talk to you soon. God bless. Bye-bye.